Spirit, so that this message, will his preach, will be really um, uh, telling what is what the text wants us to know, what God wants us to gain from this scripture. I'm reading from Romans 11, verse 11 to 36. Again, I ask, <clears throat> did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression. Salvation has come to the Gentiles to, to make Israel envious. But if their transgression means riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their full inclusion bring? I am talking to you, Gentiles. Inasmuch I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I take pride in my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection brought reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If, root, if the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap, from the olive root, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do consider this, you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree, that is wild by nature, and contrary to nature, were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening, in part, until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gift and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may know now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. 
Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. There is this very strong message in this chapter that gave me a very profound experience when I was going through it to study it and to prepare a sermon on it. It's amazing how God's plan is perfect. And it will not fail, even if, if it finds opposition from the people who were supposed to, who were supposed, that's why I don't like the mic. who are supposed to be gaining from it. Let me remind you what we did last, last Sunday regarding the first 10 verses in Romans chapter 11. We, we, are seeing, we have seen that Israel is now under God's discipline, but he did not reject her. It's, very, it's a very important point that um, Paul was, was doing there. And I had mentioned the replacement theology last week which is not a true doctrine, that the church has replaced Israel. So God, even at this time, from Paul's time forward, he is holding, he is reserving for himself a remnant of Jews who are coming to Christ. So it's important um, to, to note that, that Jews are being saved as Gentiles are being saved. But here, the discipline that um, the, the letter is addressing is the discipline on the nation of Israel. But individuals who are coming to Christ, and surely you, you know Messianic Jews, um, are finding salvation just as Gentiles are finding it also through, through Christ. So God is still preserving this remnant as he did in the past, in the Old Testament. And uh, Paul... And Israelite is a proof of this. We saw that he was the proof, the main proof that this was uh, part of God's plan. So in his generation, we have seen that Paul was like um, in Elijah's time, that only a small portion um, of Israelites believed in God, were faithful to God, were his remnant. So it's practically, it's being unfolded again here that it is still, God ha is still continuing in his message, in his plan, and even though the Jews are, are sort of being obstacles to it, the plan will not cease. So, God has not rejected Israel as his choice people, and that was concluded last Sunday. So now, we see that uh, Israel stumbled over Jesus, Jesus as unbelief. So Jesus was their, their stumbling block, as scripture says. But her fall was not a permanent fall. It's interesting to see that when John the Baptist started preaching, one of his sermons was a warning to the Jews to, to the, because of their pride. And scripture in Matthew um, chapter 3, verse 9 says this. Just before he did not have so, such good news for them, they were really angry at him. And he concluded with this. And do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. So here we can see that as Jesus told the disciples when he sent them to evangelize, if they do not receive your peace, just dust your shoes and you can turn to someone else 
And that is exactly what this scripture is telling the Jews. If you remain in your stubbornness, he can even raise up children from stone. So that was a warning to the Jews. Later on, there is a warning even to the Gentiles. And uh, it is important for us to note that. Very important, as we s we've seen scripture. Scripture was very, very specific. And it, it, uh, it was talking about the blessings that we are in through, the, through Israel's unbelief, through God's grace and mercy. But we have to remain humble because there is no guarantee and we see this later, that the fact that we are grafted in, there is no guarantee that we will make it till the end. So it is up to us to remain humble and, and see what exactly our position is. In fact, when Paul and Barnabas were preaching to the, to the Jews in Acts chapter 13, they said that we had, sp we had to speak, they told them. The Jews, we had to speak the word of God to you first. That was the chronology of how it should have been, it should have happened. But since you rejected and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. So dusting the shoes, you do not want the offer. Okay, we will go to the Gentiles. And that is good news to us, brethren. We need to celebrate the scripture today. It is good news to us, and it is important because all this knowledge, I hope it will not puff us up, as we, as we see in Corinthians, but all this no knowledge should humble us. That Jesus brought us to this blessing through our faith in him, it is all, it goes all to his merit. If I skip two verses in, in verse 48, when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. Isn't that showing us that God's plan is perfect and it will not fail? It will not fail. Even if we sometimes offer resistance, even if Jews had offered resistance not to be the ambassadors of the gospel, but now we became the ambassadors of the gospel. But, as Paul said, this should not, should not puff us up. It's very dangerous. If we lose and use a wrong attitude of arrogance, very, very dangerous for us. So it is very important, brethren. That's why I always emphasize that we are rooted in the word of God so as to know where we stand. And that will keep us humble. And that will tell us what is the source of our salvation? Why are we part in the seed of Abraham? How come we found ourselves here through faith? Huh? So that is what's, what the Lord will pass on to us today. God, use, God uses the stum her stumble, Israel's, to focus his attention on Gentiles. Because it was, his original plan was that they will receive it first, but they refused. So God turned to us, and I praise God. And I really praise God for that. Shouldn't we all be filled up with praise for that, brethren? That we have such a merciful and gracious God that turned to us. Eh? In fact, Scripture um, sort of um, puts us as the, the, uh, the wild branch, wild branches. Wild branches, as such, they do not make fruit, as the natural tree of uh, the olive tree does. So we were just wild branches. But God grafted us in the natural tree. 
the kingdom of God. So here God is, as he is doing, and that's why we are here, he is saving Gentiles through the church, who are the church today, and even, obviously, there could be Jews amongst us in the church. And he does that to provoke Israel to the faith and relationship to God. He is provoking them so that they will be jealous as he sees, as they see the blessings on the church. Is that happening? I believe so. It is happening. I had some experiences, in, as, I, as I told you last, last Sunday um, in, in Jerusalem. And uh, I spoke to these Messianic Jews, and they are on fire, brethren. They are on fire. They welcomed us, and uh, they, they, I mean, w when, I, when I switched to tele Telegram, is it Telegram or Telegraph? Telegraph. Telegram. I switched to Telegram, and the first person to join in my page and send his blessings was Jonathan from Jerusalem. And I was really blessed. This person had offered, because once I was going to organize a visit to Jerusalem, my second visit, and uh, he told me, brother, if you, if you think about coming again to Jerusalem, please contact me. You will be part of our church service. We will host you. You will go to places. That's what he told me. He, you, we will take you to places where no tourists can go. And, uh, well, I, I gave it a try, but it did not it did not succeed. But well, so God, we are seeing here God is turning as in Romans 8. You have seen Romans 8 some time ago. And, and scripture says this. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Who have been called according to his purpose. This is what God is doing now in the world. Okay. There is rejection. God said, okay. I'll come to you later, but I have other children to take care of. Who are the Gentiles? Okay? And uh, it's, it's very important that we, we establish this balance through the scripture here, that we continually check ourselves and know why we are in God's kingdom. And by whom? And how we should think about it? And surely, if we do that in the right way, it will keep us humble. Shouldn't we be kept humble? Because there is no guarantee here. And we can see it, this coming. There is no guarantee. But there is good news. Even though it seems that, th that the Jews failed, and through their failure, some Christians have seen that even God, in a way, failed with them. And no, he did not. That wasn't correct. Paul is telling us very clearly that it wasn't correct. He shot down the replacement theology, as I said last week. And today he's going to shoot down another false doctrine. We will come to that. So in verse 15, we just, we just read together. For, for since the rejection meant that God offered salvation to the rest of the world. So through this rejection... God could offer salvation to the rest of the world. So their acceptance will be even more wonderful. It will be life for those who are dead. So brethren, there is something to look forward to. There is always something better coming to us. Because God's plan is perfect and it will not fail. It will not fail us. God will not fail us. And that is our strength. That's where we, we have to um, get our strength from God's perfect um, plans. So what is the olive tree that, that Paul is talking to about here? This analogy that he is using here as, as the olive tree, um, it... it it consists, it consists of the root of the tree. And the root of the tree is, represents the, 
what Jesus, the covenant that Jesus made with Abraham. That is the root. That is, the, it started holy because that is God's covenant. So there are the natural branches in the tree that represent the, Jew, the Jews, individual Jews. The wild olive shoots, as we said um, before, represent the Gentiles, people from other nations, that is pagans, that is us. And, uh, and the root here is important to, for us to know. And because the root is holy, even the branches are holy. So whose merit is it? From where is this source coming? The source is coming from God's covenant. In fact, brethren, even Jesus used a similar analogy about a tree. This time a vine in John chapter 15. And Jesus said, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that, that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Can you see that? So why are we holy? Because of the root. Here Jesus is saying you are holy because of the word that you have received. And another, another I would like to read a bit more, but it's not on the screen. Jesus continues saying, remain in me and I will remain in you. So is there a guarantee? Without, with, without our faithfulness, without, with, without our con continual faith in Christ, we have to make our part here. Remain in me, Jesus said, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. If we cut ourselves from Christ, we will not produce fruit anymore. And Paul said here, don't think because you are grafted in and, and you fall back, you are going to remain. Because God did not even forgive the natural branch. He cut it off. So, what do you think will happen to you if you do not remain faithful? And then here we can see that the famous doctrine of once saved, always saved, is shot down dead. It's, it's just, it, it disappeared here. We have no guarantee. It, is, it has to be us. It has to be us remaining faithful. It is not like, um, uh, like through our works, okay, God is going to keep us sort of in or he is going to save us through our works. Uh, we are, I'm not saying this. It's like we receive, we receive salvation and if we do not live the way a child of God should live, then we are not showing that we are saved anymore and we, can't, we, and we, could, be, we could be broken off the natural tree. So the olive tree here, the illustration of the olive tree teaches that Israel is the cultivated tree. Israel is the natural tree. It is cultivated by God. Had branches broken off because of unbelief. Practically. So what do you think will happen to the, to the wild shoots if they do not remain faithful? If they do not believe? Paul is saying it very clearly here. They will be cut off. So, brethren, it's important that we note that we note what Scripture is saying here. In fact, as we have seen in verse 19, well, 
you may say those branches were broken off to make room for me. Yes, but remember, those branches were broken off because they didn't believe in Christ. And you are there because you do believe. So that is not what's keeping you in. So don't think highly of yourself, but fear what could happen. For if God did not spare the original branches, he won't spare you either. Isn't that clear? Is there a guarantee if we just don't care anymore? If we just do not behave as the church anymore? If we are not committed anymore to the gospel, to the kingdom of God? If we fall off our responsibilities as Christians, do you think that we are going to be happily grafted in? I don't believe so. If someone has another opinion, please share it with us. We have to remain humble. I cannot stress this further. And this applies to me. Continually it applies to me. Because I know where I've, where I've come from. And I know what God has, his is, not has, is turning me into. And I remain faithful. I remain humble. And I reciprocate to God my, my work in the church. My participation in the church. Being an active member of the body of Christ. I mean... Something passed through my mind like, right now. Who, uh, there are people who are fixated in the, the iPhones, you know, the very expensive phones. Who has an iPhone here? Very expensive phones. When the first, when a, a new model comes out, I remember I was in London once and uh, I saw this. Uh, no, sorry, I wasn't in London. I saw this on, on, on Finn. And people literally, they sleep outside the shop throughout the night. So they will be the first one to get the iPhone. That is how the church should be, brethren. That is how the church should be. We should be sleeping outside the door. So when the church opens, we will be the first one in. That's how our faithfulness should look like. You know, there is always room for progress there is always room for me to become better we are not perfect yet but we have to encourage ourselves to move forward and not stall because something interesting in, in spirituality is there isn't moving forward stopping and going backwards no it's, it doesn't work like that that, that way there is either moving forward or moving backwards. There is no gray area. If you stop moving forward, you will be starting to fall out, fall back. That's what happens, and I have experience of that, believe me. And I'll give you an example. Did you ever maybe stop or maybe start praying less and less? Slowly, gradually, and less. And, and then you realize what's happening around you when you stop praying. Did it ever happen to you? It happened to me. And then I, I come to my senses and go back. Brethren, there is no being stationary in the kingdom of God. It's either you're going forward or you're going backwards. You know? So it's good that we examine ourselves to see where we are with God. So these circumstances, they can be reversed. So, number one, 
Jews who are persistently not believing in the gospel were cut off the natural tree. We agree. We can see that in scripture. But there is another very important fact that the, the wild shoots that have been grafted in, if they turn into lukewarm people, they start to fall back, they will be cut off also. And just as Gentiles who believe in Christ today, now, will be grafted in immediately into the sap of the tree, into the holiness of the tree, even Jews who will, who will, uh, who will receive Christ today will be returned into the tree of life, the tree of the kingdom of God. So that is a rule that we are seeing here. And um, there is no uh, other interpretation to that. So practically, us being egoistic, us becoming lukewarm, or maybe I don't care people, or inactive members of the church could lead us into falling back and uh, and scripture tells us this very I am really scared of the scripture it's in Hebrews when Gentiles fall back there could be a point of no return that's very very scary very scary so why am I preaching to you today? To, to, to give you the good news? Yes, I am preaching the good news here. And it's important for us to receive the good news. But it is mostly more important for us to become disciples. Because if God is passing over to us through scripture, discipline of what happened to those who did not remain faithful, and that what will happen to us if we do the same, it's important for us to know the consequences. I, I believe that God could, couldn't judge humankind if we, didn't, we did not know the consequences, and we know the consequences so God can judge every situation. So, Paul is ensuring us here, in nearly the, the, the end part of, of, this, of this chapter, that he will, there is a future for the entire nation of Israel. And that is why we have to love Israel. That is why we ha scripture tells us to pray for the peace in Israel. Okay, so, you know, everything starts to fall in place. So, God will restore Israel to, to her former glory, to her former prestige, as he has chosen her to be so. So, practically, when Paul is closing this chapter, and he is closing a, a good part of this message because it, it has been communicated to us, through three chapters, he's using this dox doxology. And he, he puts some words, and I believe that, in a way, I believe that these words were, came to Paul spontaneously. Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. Huh? And, he, and even we should close the scripture with a doxology, a, a, an expression of praise to God for what he has done, because his plans, his plan is perfect for us, and he will not fail us. For everything comes from him and exists by his power 
and is intended for his glory. Eh? All glory to him forever. It is a, the best way to close um, what is prepared by God for humankind. And he will not stop. Nothing will stop him until he will save all those of goodwill. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Whether I, I, I preach the gospel or not. But if I preach the gospel, I will be helping, I will be giving a helping hand to God to do so. That's what he commissioned us for. Brethren, remember, now we are the ambassadors of the gospel. Not because the Jews were not, I mean, they lost it. We have to see that we um, sort of, it, it was given to us this responsibility of the gospel. Now, we are the ambassadors. But he is not ready, ready with her yet. He will restore her to her former glory. Father God, I, I thank you, Lord God, for giving us yet another time, Father, to explore and listen to your word and assure ourselves of God that you are a a holy God, a merciful God, a gracious God who has a plan for us that will not fail. Father, I ask you, make us worthy that we will carry this blessing throughout all our lives and bring others with us to give you the glory that you deserve. In Jesus' name, I pray.